Both the Galapagos Islands near the equator and South Georgia Island, a half a world away in the Antarctic, are remarkable havens for viewing wildlife. Many of the mammals and birds are accustomed to humans, so you can get relatively close to them. Some of the animals are curious and walk up to people. Among the mammals you'll see in great numbers in both the Galapagos and South Georgia are pinnipeds, a group which includes seals and sea lions as well as the walrus. Pinniped means finfoot because these animals have flippers. The classification of which pinnipeds are seals and which are sea lions is confusing. Species in a family called the true seals have no external ear flaps. On land, true seals move around on their bellies. They have small, weak front flippers that are thinly webbed. Another family is the eared seals, which include the sea lions and fur seals. They have external ear flaps and are capable of walking and running on land. The true seals tend to be quiet and generally make only soft noises. The eared seals tend to be noisy. In the capital of the Galapagos, a great many sea lions lounge in the town center. You can see them on stairways, docks, sidewalks, benches, or anywhere they can get comfortable. At night, they sometimes congregate in parks and can sound like loud drunks. Galapagos sea lions are the smallest of the world's sea lion species. The males average about 550 pounds, but can weigh up to 900 pounds and grow to be seven feet long. The smaller, slimmer females average about 200 pounds, but can weigh as much as 250. The typical Galapagos sea lion lifespan is thought to be between 15 and 24 years. Females reach sexual maturity at age five, as do males, but males often wait longer to breed. Male Galapagos sea lions are territorial. A single male can control a harem of up to 25 females. A dominant male uses a lot of energy to protect and maintain his harem and usually can do it for only three months or fewer before being displaced by another male. The frequent replacement of dominant males allows for greater genetic diversity than if one male dominated for a long period. The Galapagos sea lion breeding season lasts from May to January. Females bear one pup at a time. The gestation period is similar as for humans, lasting about nine months. After giving birth, the female will nurse her pup for about a week before leaving to look for food. She will regularly return to nurse her pup for about six months before the pup learns to fish for its own food. Even after this happens, a female will sometimes supplement her pup's diet with milk. She takes care of her pups for as many as three years, which means she might also be caring for pups from previous years. Sea lions have four nipples, and this pup is drinking from more than one. Each pup has a unique bark, which the female can recognize within the colony. A female usually will not feed a pup who is not her own. If a female dies, her young pup most likely will starve. The breeding ground in a sea lion colony is called a rookery. Sometimes one female will watch over many pups in a rookery when their mothers go to feed. Although Galapagos sea lions are agile on their feet, they at times use other means for traversing areas on a beach. Galapagos sea lions don't have access to fresh water, so they drink salty seawater. Their kidneys filter out most of the salt, causing their urine to be very salty. Seabirds process seawater differently. They have a special tube over their bill for excreting salt. You can see the tube on top of the bill of this storm petrel who landed on our boat in the Galapagos. Galapagos sea lions can dive about 2,000 feet and stay underwater for 10 minutes without resurfacing to breathe. Their primary food is sardines and their feeding areas are usually about six to nine miles offshore. Their principal predators at sea are sharks and killer whales. You sometimes see wounds on sea lions from encounters with these predators. 
The total population of Galapagos sea lions is about 50,000. While that sounds like a lot, they're an endangered species. Because they're concentrated in such a small area, a severe weather event or the outbreak of a contagious disease could wipe out a considerable portion of the population. Domestic dogs can spread diseases to sea lion colonies. Sea lions are affected by plastic pollution in the ocean, as well as by fishing nets and fish hooks. South Georgia Island contains about 95% of the population of Antarctic fur seals. They're the smallest seal species in the Antarctic. As with the Galapagos sea lions, Antarctic fur seals are eared seals. They have small external ear flaps. Their strong front flippers allow them to walk and run. They have the longest whiskers of any pinniped. The whiskers on a male can be more than 17 inches. The Antarctic fur seal breeding season usually lasts from November to January. Female fur seals produce one offspring a year. The gestation period is close to a year. Fur seal pups weigh about 11 to 13 pounds at birth. Weaning happens at around four months. The pups are mobile from an early age and can be quite aggressive. The mortality rate for seal pups is about 25%. Fighting adult males sometimes trample pups. Starvation and skull injuries are the two leading causes of pup death. Leopard seals and killer whales prey on some juveniles and pups. Fur seals rely on their thick coat of fur to keep warm. The coat is usually dark, but a small percentage of Antarctic fur seals are leucistic and their fur is cream colored. Leucism is a partial loss of pigmentation in an animal. The pigment which results in dark fur is called melanin, a word derived from the Greek melos, meaning black or dark. The word leucism is derived from the Greek leukos, which means white. Leucism is not the same as albinism, which involves a complete lack of melanin. This young leucistic fur seal doesn't have as much melanin in its fur as its non-leucistic rookery mates. Antarctic fur seals are generally solitary creatures. They spend most of their time in the water, except when they're breeding and molting. They usually dive to a depth of 100 to 130 feet and can remain submerged for an average of about two minutes. They do most of their feeding at night, which usually involves shallower dives than during the day. During much of the year, fish, especially mackerel ice fish, are the primary food source for the fur seals. They also eat krill, squid, octopus, and on rare occasions, penguins. Krill are small crustaceans. Nursing females depend heavily on krill for nourishment during the breeding season, so the reproductive success of colonies is closely linked to krill availability. In years when krill aren't abundant, the population of a seal colony can be affected both for the current and following seasons. Females are now having their first pup later in life, which might be caused by food stress. Captain James Cook visited South Georgia Island in 1775 and reported a great many seals present. Many early Antarctic explorers subsequently went to kill these animals for their pelts. Seal fur was popular for women's coats and Antarctic fur seals were almost hunted to extinction. In the 18th and 19th century, hunters slaughtered more than a million of them. At one point in the early 1900s, only about 400 were thought to remain. Because there were so few, the hunters left and turned their attention to killing whales. Krill are a primary food source for both whales and seals. As hunting caused whale numbers to sharply decline, more krill were available for the seals, which allowed seal populations to recover and expand. A 2023 study estimated the world population of Antarctic fur seals peaked at about 3.5 million in 2009 and has been declining ever since. The planet is warming faster at the two poles than at the equator. The warmer water is causing ocean acidification, which could reduce krill numbers. The melting of sea ice also could affect krill availability, and the heavy fur coats for keeping Antarctic fur seals warm could cause overheating as the climate becomes hotter. 
Also on South Georgia Island are southern elephant seals, who are true seals. They're the largest seals in the world. Males can weigh more than four tons and be up to 19 feet long. They can be as long as a giraffe is tall. Females can grow to be almost 10 feet long and weigh close to a ton. Males have a large bulbous nose, which along with their great weight is why they're thought to resemble elephants. Most of the adult males were at sea during our visit, so we saw mostly young males. When I walked past a group of elephant seals, one appeared to be trying to roar at me, but no sound came out. It was more like a yawn than a roar. Elephant seals are remarkable swimmers. They can dive up to 3,300 feet to find fish and squid, and they've been known to remain underwater for two hours, the longest recorded for any seal species. They spend most of their time in the water, living on land only when breeding and molting. When at sea, they sometimes rest on sea ice. When on land, they don't eat, living off the thick layers of fat they've accumulated. The fat also helps them to keep warm in the cold climate and cold water. Males reach maturity after about five to eight years, while females are able to reproduce after three to six years. They breed once a year and the female produces one pup. The pups are born in September and October and can weigh 50 pounds or more at birth. A pup will be weaned after about three weeks, at which point they're known as weaners. This is a play on words because they look like long, fat sausages. Some are called blubber slugs because they have a thick layer of blubber and lie on the beach like slugs. These young seals remain on the beach for eight to ten weeks before heading out to sea. Elephant seals tend to gather on beaches in large numbers. They sometimes pack so tightly together that the seals often lie on top of each other, and pups are regularly crushed because of the cramped space. Sometimes elephant seals throw sand on their back to try to keep cool. They do this while lying down, moving only their flippers. Most of the elephant seals I saw seemed to be sleeping. Occasionally, one would appear to be reacting to a bad dream and start turning over. Because the seals were so close together, that invariably meant hitting an adjacent seal. There would be a lot of snorting and grumbling before everyone settled down and peaceful slumber was restored. Many elephant seals have nose mites, which is a reason they often snort and have snot dripping from their nose. The nails on the flippers of some elephant seals appear to be beautifully manicured. Up until 1964, elephant seals were killed in large numbers because of their thick layers of blubber and populations became alarmingly low. As with the fur seals, the elephant seal population is recovered and there are now a lot of them. The pinnipeds are in the same suborder as dogs and in many ways, some resemble dogs. I hope you have an opportunity to observe the behavior of these remarkable creatures in the wild.